Yeah, back on Sabo for see and learn, and we have been surveying bats and arachnids here on the island and trying to understand the relationships of bats that are predators on arachnids. Yeah, I came here just to see what bats exist on the island, but more specifically to uh, get into predator-prey relationships between the scorpions that Lauren is looking for and some of the bats that might exist on the island, or do exist, but might be preying on scorpions. Then the second one that we said is just down that way, about 50 meters, uh, and that one is in a, a valley. And We've been out just about every night looking for bats and scorpions with anybody who wants to join us. The primary scorpion that we've been after is called a bark scorpion because it often lives under the bark of, of trees. And we also took out ultraviolet lights with us. And what that allows us to do is see the scorpions, because scorpions have this really strange property where they fluoresce under ultraviolet light. And nobody's really sure what the purpose of that is, but it makes it really great for spotting them in the night. They, grow, they glow almost a bright green, like neon green color. Uh, and so we go out and walk about 100 to 200 meters and just see how many scorpions we are able to count active along the trail. And the really interesting thing about this scorpion is that it produces venom or toxins that are specific for mammal tissues. So that's when me and Eric got this idea to come and look at bats as predators for scorpions because in Seba there are no other native mammals. For the bats we'll set up nets um, pretty much in the same area where the scorpions are and as, as uh, the public are hiking up and down looking for scorpions bats would fly into the nets and Lauren would run back and help me dislodge the bat and then we'd at least try to identify it and maybe show some of the public um, you know, some of the different characteristics of the bats and, and why they're in the area they're in, what they might eat and um, just like some, some basic facts. And it, so far we found three of the species. We were able to net three species and show them to the public, which I think is a pretty great success. If I had another three weeks here, I'm, I have no doubt that I would get every bat, and maybe even a fishing bat. So we made our way out to the Sandy Cruz Trail. And you know, to be honest, we weren't very hopeful that there were going to be scorpions there. It was very wet. It didn't seem like a great environment. But all along, Lauren, this whole trip's been talking about this one missing scorpion. It exists throughout the Antilles, and it's everywhere except for this island. And it well, there's some really old records of it here, but they're from m maybe over 100 years ago, and I've been here four times, and, and I still hadn't found it. And so I figured it must have been maybe a mistake in where they recorded that the scorpion had, had come from, or, or maybe it... Was, you know, development of the island had, had forced it to go extinct or something. So I was feeling pretty doubtful at this point that it even existed in Seba anymore. Right. So so it, the public was coming up and we found a really great spot with a nice bench to, you know, catch some bats and it seemed like it was to be a really comfortable night. And we weren't thinking about scorpions too much and so we got our uh, mist net set up to catch some bats and I just took a little stroll with a couple people down the trail and I saw a scorpion about two minutes into the walk and I was like uh wow there's a scorpion here <laughs> and I was like oh no way there's are you kidding me there's like this is so wet the scorpions usually like a little bit drier environment um and then Eric walked over and showed it to me um and so the moment I walked up I looked at it and it just took me like half a second to realize that it was the scorpion I'd never seen on Seba how do you distinguish them from the ones that we found at the sulfur mine? Yeah, so these ones, like you can see, they have these really chunky claws. Mm -hmm. The claws are like the size of their head, just about. Mm -hmm. And the others have these like long slender claws and a long slender tail. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing about this type of scorpion is that unlike the bark scorpion, which is the same species across all of the islands, this type of scorpion tends to be a different scorpion on many of the islands, so it's a different species. So so the bark scorpion is probably really good at rafting, so it's quite good at moving between islands unintentionally, but surviving the trip. Uh, these other scorpions, they, they create burrows, and those burrows are, are usually in the, in the bank of a, of a steep mountain or under a stone, and they can be up to half a meter in length, and so they're not living in, in environments where they get washed out to sea very often. And when they do, they're not inside of a, an old log where they have a raft to float on to the next island. So they're not very good at dispersing 
from island to island. And that's allowed them more time, once they arrive somewhere, to differentiate from wherever they arrive from. So this is a process called speciation, where, where something differentiates from its ancestor. And, and the, these scorpions tend to be a different species as a result of that on each island. And so there's a really good chance that this is a new species. Um, there's always a possibility that it's the same species as what's on St. Bart's or what's on Stacia, and it's really going to require uh, some microscope work and some, some back-in-the-lab uh, investigation of the literature and all this kind of stuff before I can make a, a true determination of what it is, but, but I'm pretty hopeful that if it's not a new species, it's certainly a new record, at least a new record within the last hundred years for the island.